Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 4. And in this lesson, we're looking at Chapter 2, 2.1, and partial fractions. Now, what are partial fractions? Well, splitting an algebraic fraction into partial fractions, it's the opposite, or the inverse, of adding two or more fractions together. With numerical fractions, what would that look like? Well, if you add two numerical fractions together, like two-fifths plus three-sevenths, We'd multiply the 5 and the 7 together to get 35, and 2, 7 to 14, 3, 5 to 15, add those together, we get 29 over 35. But let's say we wanted to work backwards. So start with the 29 over 35, and then split that up into two fractions, 2 fifths plus 3 sevenths. How would we do that? So working backwards and starting with 29 over 35, we could factorize the denominator, getting 29 over 35 is the same thing as 29 over five times by seven. And then we could say, well, what values of a and b will give 29 over five times seven is equal to a over five plus b over seven. And hopefully we'll be able to work out that a is two and b is three, which would say that 29 over five times seven can be split up into two fifths plus three sevenths. Now we never do that with numerical fractions, but it's frequently a very useful thing to do with algebraic fractions. And partial fractions is the method for how we do this when we have algebraic fractions. There are two methods for doing it. Uh, one's called equating the coefficients, the other's called substitution. We need to learn both methods. Um, there are some questions which require you to use both methods when you're doing the same question. Um, some questions are easy with the one, some questions are easy with the other, but we do really need to understand both of them. And we'll look at the equating coefficients method first of all. So for example, if you had to write 3x plus 3 over x minus 1 times x minus 4, and split it up into two fractions, a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 4. How do we do that? Well, the first thing we do is just add these two fractions together in the normal way. So a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 4. We multiply the x minus 1 times by x minus 4 to get a common denominator. And you can think of cross multiplying if you like. Essentially what's happening is we do a times by the x minus 4 to get this term and b times by the x minus 1 to get the other term. And then once we've done that, we multiply the brackets in the numerator. We collect terms. And we let it equal the fraction in the question. So 3x plus 3 over x minus 1 times x minus 4 is equal to this, where we've multiplied out these brackets to get ax minus 4a plus bx minus b. Then we collect together the terms on the right-hand side. So in the numerator on the right-hand side, we get a plus b times by x, and for the constant term, we get minus 4a minus b. And then equating coefficients is what happens next. So the denominators are the same on both fractions. That means if the fractions are equal to each other, the numerators must be the same as each other as well. Now, if the numerators are the same as each other, they've got to be the same number of x's on both sides, got to be the same constant on both sides. And we just write that down. So the coefficient of the x term here is 3, the coefficient of the x term here is a plus b, they must be the same as each other. The constant term here is 3, the constant term here is minus 4a minus b, they must be the same as each other. That'll give us a pair of simultaneous equations. We'll solve those equations to find the values of a and b. Once we know a and b, we can substitute them back into the question and we've got the answer. Okay, I'll let you have a go at trying to make sense of all of that yourself first. So pause the video, see if you can work out the way forwards, and then come back to me again when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at this. So we equate the coefficients of the x term on the top of the fractions, and we equate the constant term on the fractions. So first of all, looking at the x term, the coefficient of the x term on the left-hand side is 3, the coefficient of the x term on the right-hand side is a plus b. They must be the same as each other. So that gives us our first equation. 3 has to equal a plus b. Then we do the same thing for the constant terms. 
constant term on the left hand side is plus three the constant term on the right hand side is minus 4a minus b again those constant terms must be the same as each other that gives us a second equation which gives us a pair of simultaneous equations and we solve these in the normal way so those are the two equations if we add them together, we'll get 6 equals minus 3a, which means a is minus 2. Once we know the value of a, we can substitute it into the first equation or the second equation to work out what b is. I'll substitute it into the first equation. That gives us 3 equals minus 2 plus b, which gives us b is 5. Now, that's the question. Once you know a and b, you've done everything you need to do, and you can just substitute those in here. So the answer will be, 3x plus 3 over x minus 1 times x minus 4 is equal to minus 2 over x minus 1 plus 5 over x minus 4. Okay, example 2, exactly the same idea. Write 7x plus 8 over x plus 4 times x minus 6 as two fractions added together, a over x plus 4 plus b over x minus 6 by equating coefficients. Um, I'll let you have a go at working the, the whole of this question yourself. So pause the video. See if you can work your way through it, and then come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. So the first thing we do is add these fractions together, and if we add them together, you multiply the denominators together to get the denominator, and a times by x minus 6 gives us the first bit, b times x plus 4 gives us the second bit. You could get that by cross-multiplying, or it's good just to be able to see that it works. Looking at the term with a, the x minus 6s would cancel with each other, and we'll just have a over x plus 4, which is the first term. Looking at the b, the x plus 4s would cancel with each other, and we just have b over x minus 6, which is the second term. It's helpful to be able to see it like that. Multiplying out the brackets would give us that. Collecting together the terms in x and the constant term will give us that. The denominators are the same, so the numerators must also be the same, which means that we can equate coefficients, and the coefficient of the x term on the left-hand side is 7, the coefficient of the x term on the right-hand side is a plus b, that gives us the first equation. The two constants on the left-hand side we've got plus 8, on the right-hand side we've got minus 6a plus 4b, they must be equal to each other. Then we just solve those in the normal way. If we do 6 times by the first equation and add that to the second equation, that'll give us 50 is 10b, which gives us b equals 5. Substituting b equals 5 into the first equation gives us 7 equals a plus 5, which means a equals 2. And straight away, we've got to the answer. b is 5, a is 2. That means that the answer is 7x plus 8 over x plus 4 times x minus 6 must equal 2 over x plus 4 plus 5 over x minus 6. So that's the method of equating coefficients. We'll now have a look at how you would do those two questions by using the substitution method. Now, if anything, you've done the harder method. Substitution is nearly always an easier method for doing these questions, especially when you have three fractions added together or more complex questions. So you've done the more difficult one. This is probably the easier one. The way we get started is exactly the same. We add these two fractions together, and that'll give us a into x minus 4 plus b into x minus 1 over x minus 1 times x minus 4. But we don't multiply out the brackets. What we do instead is we choose values of x, which will simplify the two numerators. So on the left-hand side, we've got 3x plus 3. On the right-hand side, we've got this. If we choose to use x equals 4, and bear in mind, this works for any value of x. It works for every value of x. So we can choose any value of x we want to, and it will work. So if we choose x equals 4, we'll get 3 times 4 plus 3 on the left-hand side. And then we'll get a into 4 minus 4 here, and b into 4 minus 1 here. And the reason why we've chosen 4 is it because it makes this bracket equal to 0. So we choose x equals 4 to make this bracket 0. This term will vanish. We can just work out b straight away. Then what we'll do is choose x equals 1. And x equals 1 will make this bracket equal to 0, which means the b term will vanish. And we can write down the value of a straight away. 
So very quickly, you can work out what A and B must be. Okay, I'll let you have a go at finishing this question off yourself. So pause the video, see if you can finish the question, and then come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at this. So we've already put x equals 4 in. We just need to tidy this up now. So that'll give us 12 plus 3 on the left-hand side. This term becomes 0, which is why we chose x equals 4. And here we'll have b times by 3, which means 15 is 3b and b is 5. We've got b straight away. Then we do the same thing by choosing x equals 1. On the left-hand side, you'll get 3 times 1 plus 3. And on the right-hand side, you'll get a into 1 minus 4 plus b into 1 minus 1. And the 1 minus 1 is the reason why we chose 1. So we've chosen it so that this bracket will equal 0 and this term will vanish. And that simplifies to 6 is minus 3a. That gives us a equals minus 2. So substitution with a lot of questions, it gets you to the answer very quickly. And that's the same answer as we had before. 3x plus 3 over x minus 1 times x minus 4 is minus 2 over x minus 1 plus 5 over x minus 4. Okay, we'll revisit example 2, and I'll let you have a go at doing the whole question by substitution. So we'll add these fractions together in the normal way. You don't multiply the brackets. You choose two values. You'll choose x equals 6 and x equals minus 4, and then move on from there. Okay, pause the video, have a go at doing the question, and come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. So adding the fractions together will give us that. And then first of all, we'll choose x equals 6. Substituting 6 in the left-hand side gives us that. Substituting 6 in the right-hand side gives us that. And we've chosen 6 so that this bracket with the a will equal 0. So that simplifies to 42 plus 8 equals 0 plus 10b, which means we can work out b straight away. 50 is 10b, so b must equal 5. Then we do the same thing, but this time choosing x equals minus 4. That gives us 7 times minus 4 plus 8 on the left-hand side, and minus 4 minus 6 times by a, and minus 4 plus 4 here, which equals 0, which is the reason why we chose minus 4. So that simplifies to minus 28 plus 8, is equal to minus 10 times by a, which means that a must equal 2. So again, very quickly, substitution gets you to the answer. a is 2, b is 5, and that's the same answer as we had before. Okay, one more question. Uh, it's more difficult because we've now got three factors on the bottom, which means we're going to split this up into three fractions. So we'll have a over x plus 4, plus b over x plus 3, plus c over 2x plus 5. Now, adding three algebraic fractions together looks really complicated, but it's nowhere near as bad as you would think. So we multiply the three factors together to get the common denominator, and we'll do a times by the x plus 3 times by the 2x plus 5 for the first term, and b times by the other two things. So b times by the x plus 4 times by the 2x plus 5 for the middle term, and c times by both of these, the x plus 4 and the x plus 3 for the last term. Okay, I'll let you have a go of working your way through this. So you'll need to add all three fractions together. We'll then be using x equals minus 4, x equals minus 3, and x equals minus 5 over 2 in order to work out the values of a, b, and c. Pause the video, have a go. Come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look. First of all, there's the whole business of adding these three fractions together. And as I said, it's nowhere near as bad as you would think. So you just multiply the three factors together, and that'll give us a common denominator with the other fraction on the other side, um, which we do need um, a common denominator for these three terms. Now, to work out what goes with the A, if you're familiar with cross-multiplying as an idea, then with the a, you multiply it by the other two terms. So the x plus 3 and the 2x plus 5. With the b, you multiply it by the other two terms, the x plus 4 and the 2x plus 5. And with the c, you multiply it by the other two terms. So that's one way of thinking about it. Better than that, really, is just looking at what we've got here. Looking at the a term, 
the x plus 3s would cancel, the 2x plus 5s would cancel, we'd just be left with a over x plus 4, which is what we want. Looking at the b term, the x plus 4s would cancel, the 2x plus 5s would cancel, we'd just be left with b over x plus 3, which is what we want. And same with the c term, the x plus 4s cancel, the x plus 3s cancel, we would just be left with c over 2x plus 5, which again is what we want. Then we move on in exactly the same way as before. This isn't different at all. We choose minus 3 because it's going to make this bracket 0. It's also going to make this bracket 0, which means both of these two terms are going to disappear. So substituting in minus 3, it all looks very complicated. We've got 7 times minus 3 squared plus 39 times minus 3 plus 56. And then substituting minus 3 into here makes this term 0. Uh, substituting minus 3 into here will give us that. Substituting minus 3 into here will make this term 0 because the x plus 3 term will be 0. Tidying all of that up gives us 2 on the left-hand side. It's only the middle term that exists at all. And we'll get b times by 1 times by minus 1, which means that b is equal to minus 2. Then we do the same thing, but putting minus 4 in. So we substitute minus 4 into both sides. Substituting minus 4 into the numerator on the left-hand side gives us that. On the right-hand side gives us that. And this time, it's both of the last two terms that will disappear because they've both got a term in x plus 4. That'll simplify to 12 equals a times minus 1 times minus 3, which means 3a is 12 and a is equal to 4. And then last of all, Substituting x equals minus 5 over 2, which is a little bit fiddly, it's because this term here is a little bit awkward. To make 2x plus 5 equal to 0, you're solving 2x plus 5 equals 0, and that gives you x equals minus 5 over 2. So we substitute minus 5 over 2 into the left-hand side, it gives us that. Substitute minus 5 over 2 into the right-hand side, uh, it makes the first two terms 0, that's why we chose minus 5 over 2. We only get the term in C. And that is what we will get for it. Tidying that up on the left-hand side, all of that tidies to 9 over 4 using your calculator. And again, just pop all of that in your calculator. And the right-hand side tidies to 3 over 4 times by C, which means that C is equal to 3 if we do 9 over 4 divided by 3 over 4. So we found A, we found B, we found C. Now, a quick comment here. You could try and do this question yourself using the other method, using the equating coefficients method. It does work, and it would be a good thing to try and do. What you'll find is you'll get to the algebra, multiplying all the brackets is a little bit more tricky. Collecting together the terms in x squared x and the constant, again, it's just more algebra to be done there. Then when you equate the coefficients for the terms, what you will get is a pair of, well, not a pair, you will get three simultaneous equations that have to be solved. So you can do this using the equating coefficients method, and it's certainly worth having a go at doing it, but you'll notice that it's a lot more difficult if you try to. Anyway, we've just about finished this question. We found A, we found B, we found C. All we need to do now is just substitute those back into the question. And that'll give us that the fraction is equal to 4 over x plus 4 minus 2 over x plus 3 plus 3 over 2x plus 5. Okay, that gets us to the end of this lesson. If you've got the textbook, turn to page 9 and have a go at exercise 2a. Thank you very much for listening and cheerio.